Welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast, empowering filmmaking entrepreneurs. Hey, welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast. Yes, this is the podcast where we empower you, the filmmaking entrepreneur. And a great way to get started is to get the book, How to Make and Sell Your Film Online and Survive the Hollywood Implosion while doing it. It's available in paperback, Kindle ebook, as well as an audiobook. And in fact, you can get the audiobook for free when you go to survivetheimplosion.com. That's survivetheimplosion.com. Hi, Film Trooper listeners. This is your host, Scott McMahon, and I have not released an episode in quite some time, a few months, and that's why this particular episode is entitled What I Learned from My Hiatus from Film Trooper, and this is part one, um, because it's a lengthy conversation I have with my special guest, Kyle Irwin, from the Backyard Space Opera podcast, and you'll understand why he's on the show and what I have to share. I hope you get a lot of you know lessons from. Um, so without further ado, there's a lot to get into. Here's Kyle Irwin from the Backyard Space Opera with me, Scott McMahon from Film Trooper, on this long hiatus. Here we are back again on the Film Trooper podcast. Ah, so I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I know. I have my, my spiel that I do at the beginning of mine to get me going because I, I, I need that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This actually might be the beginning. So anyway. <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to explain to the listening audience, you know, uh, this t- this particular episode is going to be entitled What I Learned from My Hiatus from Film Trooper, because it's been a few, several months since I published a um, an episode, a podcast episode. Uh, those who've been following for a while probably heard that I was entering real estate, and um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And so I've had a few episodes from the indie film coach, Ron Newcomb, and he, uh, you know, has produced those. And there's that, he actually has a handful of them, you know, to go that I have to put, um, you know, put out there to um, publish and upload. So that'll be coming after this particular episode. Um, so you'll see Film Trooper Podcast back in some sort of regular, you know, uh, intervals like it used to. But um, anyhow, moving forward. I want to introduce you, my guest, who's sort of helping me banter back and forth. Uh, I want to, um, you are Kyle Irwin of the Backyard Space Opera. But why don't you introduce yourself um, and in terms of, of the podcast you run and, and, and the movies that you're doing, and as well as um, – and then talk about the book and, and the, the private practice you're running as well. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. So I run a podcast called Backyard Space Opera, and basically it's about – science fiction and fantasy movie production and and media creation but it's all about micro budget kind of like all about you know from film troopers point of view too but we just kind of hone in on the the fantasy and sci-fi genre and our podcast is about education but also really just trying to inspire people and be positive and and help people share their work and uh, any kind of uh, positive energy we can give to people to help them pursue their dreams of of creative endeavors and that's that's what we do and i'm a marriage and family therapist i have a private practice in orange county and i've been building it up for about a year now and it's uh, you know i'm really excited about where it's going and i'm kind of folding in backyard space opera into my practice which is very exciting i work mostly with teens um autism spectrum issues obsessive compulsive that kind of thing yeah, and then also you're an author. So what's the, what's the yeah, book? Yeah, so I, I wrote a book called Blockbuster Parenting because a lot of the approach I do to therapy, I use this kind of conceptualization tool that is really about storytelling and about the hero's journey, the Joseph Campbell stuff, and about a lot of screenwriting techniques I kind of fold into it too to help people understand how the story, the autobiographical story that we create in our in our minds is a powerful thing in our lives. And if you understand it, you can kind of use it to solve problems and to uh, parent your kids and and help them grow up. Nice, nice. And, you know, Kyle here is probably being very modest, but like his, he's, he's an amazing like uh, stop motion animator, uh, like builds his own puppets and then he does his own stop motion. And um, with all in the spirit of, you know, like sort of the B sci-fi movie, uh, mm-hmm. and like a th- uh, an homage to uh, Ray Harryhausen. You know th- those yeah. types of things, and there's a whole niche like of that world in the sci-fi um, fantasy spectrum. And you know, and how we met is interesting because with Film Trooper, it was designed as sort of a educational exploration into the concept of like what it really means to 
uh, become an independent filmmaker uh, and and build a sustainable lifestyle for yourself, you know, making films outside of the Hollywood system and outside of living in Los Angeles or New York or any sort of major cities. Um, that's sort of, you know, exploring that question. And in my process of doing that, I was also learning about online entrepreneurship or online running online businesses, online marketing. And it was interesting because a lot, you know, I, I kind of just started Film Trooper with a little bit of a plan um, but not a really great plan. It was just sort of like I just had a passion or I had a burning need to like find these answers or ask these particular questions. And, and the experts that I followed, um, they would do things such as, well, you know, the, the podcast or if you have a blog, if you're writing a blog or you're doing like a YouTube show, a video show, those are essentially just content marketing. The, it's marketing, but through the vehicle of content and content meaning that, you're sharing some valuable piece of information. So when we listen, read blogs, you know, the idea is that you're reading a piece of article that answers a question, a, a need you have. Because you go on Google, either you're shopping for something, but most people, if they're shopping for something, they're on Amazon. And Amazon is like this gigantic search engine that um, is specific for buying stuff, where Google was like answering a question. And people are like, well, how do you like lose weight? Or, you know, how do you get over depression? Or or in the film world, it's much more specific. Like, how do you write a script? Or how do you sell a script? How do you make a movie? How do you use this specific camera? You know, and then the search will show not only blog posts, but now in video is just exploded. And so you'll see all these um, video links to like, how do you do something? And um, with that concept of like the content marketing, I was like, okay, so the Film Trooper podcast, if it is content marketing, it's providing a space for education or, or discussion. Um, and, and if I'm trying to apply uh, the, the tools and the trades of these online entrepreneurs and marketers, like, well, how do you, what is the product that I'm selling? Um, and I sort of, I remember writing my book that it was, the book was sort of to, to explore, like after a year or two doing the podcast, what did I learn? And so now I'm going to, you know, condense it and help bring all these ideas together in a books format. And then, then I would use the, the podcast to just, you know, sell the book. That's sort of as basic as can be. Um, but also from that, there was a suggestion that says, well, once you get that up and running, once you have your content marketing um, uh, vehicle, whether or not it's a blog, writing blog posts, whether or not it's doing an audio podcast or it's doing a video uh, YouTube, YouTube series or whatever it might be, um, you know, then you got to ask yourself, what are you selling? Are you? And the easiest thing to do is just sort of sell your consulting services. Um, and so I just threw that up there one time to, to see if anybody was interested. And I got a few people that paid me for, you know, um, uh, their time, my time to help them kind of navigate the, some of the questions they had and build them a marketing plan and, and sort of just keep like in a, 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 a like focused on whatever they're they're doing. So then I try to formalize it after I think like the hundredth episode of the podcast and I launched the um, the Film Trooper Accountability Academy. The concept there was if there was a number of people that could come into the Accountability Academy, you know, pay X amount of dollars a month. Um, then that could potentially be like a, a nice sustainable revenue in terms of, you know, uh, providing that service. The interesting thing is, it's like I had a hand people sign up um, and that's how I met you. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I will say like from my end of, you know, reading your book was huge to me because it was just the exact kind of thing I was interested in, in terms of moving forward in, in your own efforts and trying to do something outside the system that you could, you know, and I, was, I loved it. And then you had the accountability announcement. I was like, yes, absolutely. I will sign up for this. And you have been the driving force in most of my success through our, our meetings. It's like every time we meet, there's a new angle that you bring up and that's helped me move in this direction. I feel I'm, I'm, got a lot of success from so i will publicly thank you for that <laughs> well thank you well, thank you very much well i thought it was it was neat because you came in and, and it, it forced me to uh just you know it's like once a week basically we we're spending an hour and i'm just in there to be not necessarily an accountability coach but just to, to listen to where you want to go and then i like the the amount that i had studied the amount that i understood the amount that i was applying myself to say, kind of craft it to a way like, well, have you thought about this? Maybe you can do this. 
but I did. I remember you wanting to launch. Um, number one, you had your film, like the short film you had yeah. hadn't even finished yet. So getting yourself focused on that, never even entering into a film festival yet. So working with you on a strategy, how to get it into the film festivals that you wanted to. And then we talked about, you were like, I want to launch this podcast. And so I remember it was really neat because of some of the the, um, the hacks and some of the things that I learned about running the Film Trooper podcast. I said, uh, you know, apply this to your film, um, your your film podcast, your movie podcast. And boom, like you're t- like one of the top rated movie making podcasts, um, if I'm correct, yeah. on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's yeah, all of your tips has allowed my podcast to, to thrive and, and and again it's just it's all thanks to the the, the coaching you've given me well i mean i, I i'll pat myself back i think yeah. you do a good podcast and yes I, you do <laughs> i'm proud of our our work and i work really hard on it but at the same time there are uh, there's a you know I, and, and i talk to these people on my podcast constantly who they're great creatives they have wonderful talent they make wonderful things but they don't know how to put it out there in a way that's going to be effective and in the therapy world we call that uh, executive functioning skills like all the kind of hmm. logistical issues that come up that can be really hard, especially for creatives. Mm-hmm. And and that's kind of um, a big thing of what I talk about too. And, and, uh, and I think you've helped me a lot with that as well Is how do I be effective beyond just having good content? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, it, and it's interesting. Uh, thank you. It's, it's been great to just be part of your journey to watch it. Cause I remember, you know, we've been together for a while and we meet every, almost every week. And we just spend a hard time just looking at what you're working on. And I said, it was awesome to see the uh, podcast grow to what it's at. And then you had this this platform, this leverage that opened up doorways to all these specialty um, conventions. And then when you brought your, not only the, the models and stuff that you're working on your your film, um, but you have a small community that you've built and, and you have the podcast that it's like, there's some legitimacy there now that you're going to these conventions and there's a platform for you to grow it, to grow your interest and grow your, your network. I've seen it grow and it's been pretty amazing. And, uh, I don't know if you yeah, want to it, talk about that a little bit. Well, it's, yeah, it's been huge because the podcast, it, it, you know, it goes back to what you're talking about in your book too. Of If you give back, if your marketing strategy is to, uh, be value added and say like, I, I want to talk you up and myself at the same time. I'm not just trying to exploit you. I really w- love your work and I, and I want to share it with the world. And, and that's been huge for pe- for me connecting with people. And it's interesting where like I started doing the, the stuff to kind of push my own work because I wanted to do my own independent thing and not necessarily be a specialist on other people's productions. But I've made these connections, and now I end up being a specialist more often. <laughs> than, yeah, yeah. Then, because like right now I'm working on a stop motion uh, gig for a short film that um, you know I really love the guys working on it, and they asked me to do it. I was like, yeah, cool, I'll do it. And it's it's really fun, but it's not in, at all the direction I intended to go, which is right. kind of weird. Right. Now it's interesting. I'm gonna unpack this a little bit. So like you know I was mentioning on the on the film trooper side of things, which is like. You know, either you launch a blog, either you launch a podcast or a YouTube video series. And then, you know, not that everything has to be, you have to sell something, but it's, there's a lot of work that goes into this. You just don't want to do it for free forever, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is a lot of work. And my listeners may notice that my shows are a little less uh, regular than they used to because I've got so much work to do on my private practice right now. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, um, and, and we'll get into that later on about, you know, time management, time blocking. We can ca- talk about some of the things we had tried uh, together. Um, um, but but one of the things was, you know, from Film Trooper podcast launching to to networking, to meeting, to, to, to exploring these questions in depth. And I've had the opportunity to meet so many amazing people all over the world via, you know, the podcast basically i only met a handful of them in person ever you know i just know a lot of them through emails and and the skype conversations but that you know perpetuated the creation of the book that focused this energy i remember actually like shutting down the podcast for a few weeks because i needed to finish the book and um so the book was finished and now i'm just like okay the next step after i get my breath you know after the 100th episode it's like let's do this uh, accountability academy and the idea was to have this membership um I'll take, uh, you know what I'll do if, if if there's a way to like do a little ding star, like this is the, this is the part to remember. If everybody wants to know sort of like the basic models of how uh, online businesses work, uh, this is, we can, un, you know, uncover it. We can unpack it right now. Mm-hmm. So the, what they talk about in um, the experts 
you know, I have this literally on my board so they can figure out how, how all this stuff, you know, breaks down. And it's in the book too. Um, this is talking about the sales funnel or like the uh, conversion funnel of mm -hmm. uh, that's how the um, uh, business people talk. And the first thing you have to have is and just imagine this gigantic funnel. So on the top, it's really wide and down below. It's like there's something small. And that's sort of maybe the small is like is like how you get paid. You know, <laughs> yeah. So the big lead, you have to create sort of a lead magnet, and um, meaning that you have to have something that people are going to be interested in, whatever content or whatever, um, um, you know, topic that you're interested interested in that might be uh, interested in other people. You or what? What kind of pains are you solving in the marketplace? So, um, you know, for for Film Trooper, it's like this. For the for the first half, I was advertising like a free quick guide or free um, a gear guide, and since everybody seemed to really respond to um, um, knowing like, well, what what kind of a equipment do you use to make your film? Because I, I got to backtrack. So Film Trooper started before I started Film Trooper. I, I made the the short film. Not, I made the film, the feature film, the Cube for five hundred dollars without a crew, and then I advertised go get the uh, equipment list guide at freegearguide.com. So that's freegearguide.com. And people will go there and it's a simple PDF that I just broke down. Like here's all the equipment that I use and how I use it with, to shoot a feature film without a crew for very little. And that seemed to, and, but in order to get it, you would have to enter your email address. And so that was how I start building my list for before I even had Film Trooper really up and running. So now people are on the list, I realized that I had to give even more value. So it took me a while because then I was I was asked to do all these uh, talks and presentations and, and be on on, um, on like a, a panel, you know, discussing filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And from that, I had to refine my presentation, you know, the PowerPoint presentation where you're like, well, here. And people wanted to know what is the new landscape of um, film distribution. So I had to... Um, you know, over time doing that presentation, I fine tuned the, the visuals and I said, you know, it would be easier because I used to do like a webinar. I would try to do these live webinars where I would do the presentation and at the end I would say, hey, you can pick up my book right now. So that made a handful of sales, but it's, uh, there's a lot of work, you know, every, yeah. I don't know if, if anybody's tried to do a live webinar before, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot of work to get it up and running and get people to join. And you realize you're only, you know, you're only getting a handful of people here and there. Uh, the online marketers use this technique, and they did a couple of years ago. It was a, it was a, it was something that you saw a lot kind of pop up, like you know, sign up for this free webinar. And what it, what what it was is they give you a, a good chunk of knowledge or free you know free content to get you thinking about um, solving a certain problem. And then what happens is at the end, because you realize you need more if they've done their job really well, is that that's when they do the upsell. The upsell is like then now you can buy my course for you know, a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or sign up. You know, what I mean, it's like it was. It ranged from anywhere from like a you know a hundred dollars to you know a thousand dollar course or something like that. And th this all actually stems from um, the. It's actually kind of funny that 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 business model of the web webinar was very similar to what um, the model that. Um, I forget the particular guy who actually created this type of model, but uh, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, he used the same model. So what happens is like you'll see these advertisements in your town that says, you know, come to this free seminar to learn about how to make money on the, in the stock market or how to make money selling homes or, you know, investing in homes. And the thing is, is that you, if you go to those seminars, there's, you know, you would sign up and then you sit there for like an hour and then they would do the upsell. It's like they get you all excited about, you know, making money. But to, to learn it, you got to sign up for the like the rich dad, poor dad, um, like university or classes. And then but that that's when it's like if for the special time that you're here at this, you know, seminar, you know, only this time only you're going to get get it for like half off for a couple hundred dollars. So then mm -hmm. then you would go to you sign up and. Now, I didn't do this, but this is how this this racket works. Then you would sign up <laughs> to like, okay, I'll I'll do the I got the free seminar now I want more. So here's five hundred dollars, and I'll go to the next session in a week or so. And then what they do is then they try to upsell you more to like ten thousand dollars program, twenty five thousand dollar program. It became this really weird 
cultish thing. Yeah. yeah. You know? And um, so the thing is, is that, you know, Kiyosaki is like a, a is like a, a good friend of Donald Trump's. So the, and what he did was that Trump saw what Kiyosaki was doing and he created the Trump University, which is if you follow the news, then that's what happened where all those lawsuits against it, because um, it, it was and even uh, Kiyosaki's organization got, you know, um, fronted for being sort of defrauding a lot of people in the process of how they handled this this teaching university. So a couple of years ago, like um, even there's some really good parts that came out of the, the, the general concept of the rich dad, poor dad. Um, book and and inspired a lot of people to go into like being entrepreneurs and, and investing in certain things, but there was a there was a handful of people saw sort of through like the emperor's new you know new clothes type thing and it's like, ah, you know spending like fifty thousand dollars for all this education is crazy you know so then all of a sudden you saw these new players start coming in online that were offering sort of the same um, value for lot lot less like now you're talking about you know twenty five hundred dollars. So now compared to $25,000 or $50,000, $2,500 seems even, you know, amazing, you know, because you can get the same sort of education. But now they were just doing the same process online. And now what we're seeing, it's been so watered down for so many years, you can get pretty much the same education for free or uh, as low as like, you know, 75 bucks. So, right. so it's really fascinating to see like where it started in like the 90s. Um, of where people are dishing out like you know fifty thousand dollars, and the online world came in. There's some entrepreneurs that came in. They were they're trying to peddle again like a ten thousand dollar version of it, but then it got it got watered down, watered down more. Um, and then you saw it like you know go from like a thousand dollar course to all of a sudden now it's like a hundred dollar course. And it's just yeah, it's the same for uh, in in in, uh, in my world. There's um we have continuing education units you have to get to keep your license active, mm -hmm. and and that model is like. I don't know alive and well, but like it's it's very ubiquitous in that world of offering courses to get your continuing education. And the big thing currently is getting certifications. So yeah. like a lot of companies will create this special certification, and that's how they can upsell to if you really want to get the get the good stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, that's a big thing. Of I have to I, and I have to say that being in real estate for the last three months, the same thing. There's you are as a realtor, you are bombarded. With just because we you're the same boat, uh, license law requires us to have continuing education units, and get you know um, reapply for our license every two years, and we have to have so much education under our belt, but you have to pay for that, and so you have to like figure out like what's the best bang for your buck, or because um, you're just bombarded with all these companies that just they I think they just assume that every realtor is wealthy, and then you're just like go you know yeah. you know buy our stuff. That's interesting that you brought that up. So anyway, so that's sort of the concept of like of what we've seen in a trend that's sort of happened in the world of like um, like education of any kind or, you know, self-improvement, uh, wealth education, things like that. And so these online entrepreneurs have sort of, you know, dissected sort of the process of how it might work online. And so I mentioned the sales funnel. So you would have this lead magnet and I was offering – advertising this uh, free gear guide for a f feature film that I made with no crew that got you onto the film trooper podcast uh, list. And then I continue to have the podcast to talk about these things to keep people engaged, you know, so that you're top of mind to some extent. So that's sort of how mm -hmm. it worked. And then I needed to create, um, uh, they call it a tripwire. Um, this is sort of, uh, they, this is really coming from Ryan Dice, who is like king of a, he, he runs digital marketer, um, mastery or effort, right? he's like the digital marketer guy and he came up with a term called trip tripwire and so the idea is that you give all this free stuff away first you know and i actually saw this with copy blogger as well so they gave a ton of free stuff away so so you would be the the first the first form of transaction is somebody willing to give their email address for all this free stuff that's you know that, that's as as basic as the economics work you know like here's mm -hmm. all this free stuff could I please have your email address? Like, and it has to be legitimate. It has to be legitimate, which is why they have to make sure you're not a, a robot, which is why you have to verify it, you know, to make sure that it's not just some throwaway email that you just put in there. You know, they want to make sure. And then there's a way to follow up to make sure that that person is indeed getting value out of the free stuff they're giving you. And then what you try to do is then sell what they call a low hanging, like a low, 
low priced uh, product, like anything that's ten dollars and less, and they call it a tripwire product. Um, and that way, you get the uh, people on your email list to um, get comfortable having an enjoyable um, experience buying something from you. And so, I didn't really have the only actually the tripwire product I had was my movie because it was you know you could yeah. re- rent it for ninety nine cents or whatever it is or buy it for three which bucks. I enjoyed a yeah. whole lot yeah so that would gives you inspiration like well if this Yahoo can make a movie feature film with no crew f- like this. Okay, that gives me inspiration to do something else. So that, that was the idea. It's like, okay, here's here's my tripwire product. Buy the movie, you know, <laughs> or rent the movie or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. And then you're supposed to actually then keep them keep on uh, you know ongoing content in the, the this uh, relationship via email. And then you're supposed to offer like a what they call a core offer, like your main offer, which should be around like the hundred dollar range or the or two two hundred dollar range. Um, and I, the only product I had in my, my funnel is the book because the book is, you know, you can either get it for free when you sign up for audible or, or, you know, there's a Kindle version and a paperback version and you know, it's like 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 25 bucks or whatever it might be. So that's as much. So I only jumped from like a, a 99 cents rental or a $3 purchase of the movie to now I'm asking like, if you enjoyed all this stuff, then I've spent time. Like, it's not just like some throwaway book. It's like, here's three years of, of running Film Trooper podcasts and exploring these questions, interviewing all these experts, and let me curate all this information and put it all into a very sort of, um, f- you know, one thought, a, a, a new way of looking at film, uh, your filmmaking career and film distribution and film uh, marketing and, you know, uh, how to sell films um, with this book. And now, you know, and it's a, I felt like the, the the amount of work I put into it after so many years, you either can get it for free with Audible or yeah, that'd be cool if you, put, you spend like ten bucks, fifteen it, bucks on it. Yeah, I mean you could. I mean it's I love your book. I can't say enough about it. I I you, you could try. I don't know. I feel like it's worth way more than ten bucks. But yeah. Well, it's interesting because then the book, then the, then the next step they say is like from that book, you, what you're really supposed to do, at least the experts say, is you're then supposed to build a, a course. And I was building a course and, but I, you know, so I have like a course, it's like a third finish, a third, you know, like a one, you know, one quarter or whatever finished. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's in pieces. And so the, 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 the thought pattern there is like, you take your book and then you make a course and the course is what you're going to sell for like a 90 bucks or whatever it is. Um, because that, cause you, re- you realize you were competing against something like masterclass so that yeah. they've taken that idea that what they saw was like this on um, this huge movement of online education, you know, popping up online over the years. I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen it. Uh, the sites like Udemy uh, before that is Lynda.com, who sold whatever for like a billion dollars to um, LinkedIn. You know, so Lynda.com was a resource for learning how to do anything like how do I use Photoshop? How do I edit on Final Cut? How do I do anything? You know. And they just created these video tutorial programs that they sold behind a paywall for a high price, or now that became a membership, and you can have access to all these courses over the years, and they keep updating. And I, I was a member of many of those, and they they were great. Yeah, they're it's phenomenal. Like it, it is phenomenal. So like Udemy is like the sort of like the garage sale version of Linda. <laughs> so it's like, um, but now people are. But Masterclass put a little bit of class onto it, and says we're going to specifically focus on these people. And the way Masterclass actually started was the guy who started it, he, his wife or his girlfriend is the daughter of Dustin Hoffman. So, and so he is a filmmaker, then, then took the opportunity to uh, convince Dustin Hoffman to do the first class. Because once they had Dustin Hoffman in place, then they had the collateral to go to people like all the other people, you know? Because like yeah. once you have one big star on it, then you, the, and then once they saw really what it was, um, you know, I don't know what the revenue split is or whatever it is, but you know, now, now they've made these amazing classes available for only 90 bucks, you know, it's crazy. So that's mm-hmm. sort of like, it's, it's hard because when they came out, I was thinking like, you know, gosh, the concept is, is having that $90 product is, you know, here's the deal. Sorry. Give me a second as I bring up a calculator. Cause I'm terrible. So, so no it's like, <laughs> say you have a $90 product. And you made, you know, 500 sales. That's about $45,000, you know, 500. So the idea is that to have like your ongoing blog 
or your ongoing podcast or your ongoing video show on YouTube, if you're able to get large numbers to follow you, then those who have followed me understood this thing I talk about in the book called the conversion rate, like the marketing conversion rate. And the average marketing conversion rate, uh, sales con conversion rate is 1% to 3%. That means that, put it this way, your movie trailer, if it gets 1,000 views online and, and you have a movie you're selling, on average, about 1% to 3% will actually buy it. So that's anywhere from 10 to 30 people. <laughs> so, you know, so, and if you're selling your movie for like, you know, over three bucks, you know, you're going to make anywhere from like $30 or a hundred bucks or whatever it might be. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's really, but if you look at that, it's actually fairly, um, it's universal. Like in anything you look at, you're going to see like this conversion rate of one to 3%. You can just like Google it if you want to see like, what does that mean? Like, uh, they saw direct, they have this thing in marketing called direct mail response. So people that, you know, send you stuff in the mail, like you just get bombarded bar by junk mail. Well, that junk mail, they send it out to like neighborhoods upon neighborhoods and they get about a one to 3% conversion rates. People, you know, one, that many people convert on uh, these advertisements. And so with that said, that's the, pro that's the whole concept of running anything online is that if you generate a big enough audience and you have enough traffic um, going to your blog or your podcast or your video show and if you have something you're selling you're you're looking at a one to three percent conversion rate and that's and if you could instead of selling a product that's like ten dollars for you know 500 people to buy it if you sold something at ninety dollars and there's 500 people to buy you could see the difference between like forty five thousand dollars and um and then what do, what do you call it? Yeah. Then five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. So so go, yeah. like so if you had ten dollar product and you had sold it to five hundred people, you only make ten thousand. As opposed, if you just had a product that was worth ninety dollars, you could make forty five thousand dollars. And so that's sort of the concept of the core offer. So to back up on the sales funnel, you have your lead magnet, give away something for free. The first um, sign of an exchange is somebody giving you an honest email. You know, and then if you sell them a tripwire product, something that's a low cost, ten dollars and under, and they enjoy the process, they enjoy the product, then you can offer them something of a core offer at the hundred dollar range or more. And then the real profit, what they call like, there's a profit maximizer. Sometimes you've seen it if you go to something where you buy something, and all of a sudden, like a online, there's something that pops up afterwards. Like um, for an extra thirty bucks, you can get this additional thing. Or, oh, yeah. you know, like you see it, like you can't even Vista get out. Vistaprint got me just the other day when I ordered my business cards. You're like, for two bucks more, you get another hundred. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> Vistaprint, you got me. I say, <laughs> see, Mr. God, it works. It, they, it's it, it's a proven science that, because it's, it's no sweat off any, your back, just like, no, I'm not interested. But they actually are able to capture um, uh, more sales that way. So I don't have anything like that. Like, it's not like somebody goes, to, like, I don't have a system in place because so I, I have to rely on people buying the book through Amazon and Audible. So, like, if I was through my own system, then I would say, like, oh, I bought the book for 20 bucks. And then you're about to check out and it says, for an extra $10, I'm going to throw all this other stuff in. And you're like, oh, no problem. I, I want that. You know, boom. Mm -hmm. So then every, then the idea is that more average, your average sales are like, you know, 30 bucks or, or more. So you can imagine if you, you're selling like a $90 product and like you can offer like something of value for like a hundred dollars or whatever it might be. Um, you, any way you can maximize the profit. And then they talk about, this is the last thing in the funnel, which is what they call the return path, which is like everybody online of the entre entrepreneurs I followed it for the last few years, there's a, there was a movement to try to finally get off this, this, this bandwagon of just selling an ebook, you know, it was. It got to the point like, well, how do you create a membership? How do you create something where you had recurring revenue come in every yeah. month, and at at large scale numbers? So memberships would be it. And so, so say you know somebody's paying fifty dollars a month, um, uh, for membership, and say you had five hundred members, you know, and so you would make two hundred fifty thousand a month if you had a large you know membership of five hundred. Say something more crazy, just something simple. So you have 100 members that pay you $50 a month. You're making $5,000 a month. 
as long as that you the membership you create for that hundred people, people feel like they're getting their value for with, right? And so that's what the create. That's what I ventured out to see what would happen if I create the Film Trooper Accountability Academy, which you joined. So for a monthly fee, you know, I want to make sure that everybody got you know ample time. So it started off. I only had like a handful of people signed up right away after the hundredth episode, and uh, people, uh, you know, half of them have you know you know left and so on like that. But it's one of those things. The reality is, I didn't know what I. I didn't know really what I had because the reality is I it's it's a lot of time. <laughs> it really well you know I can I I can talk yeah. about that cuz it's like I essentially do the same thing in some ways cuz you know I'm a therapist and people yeah. pay me to come for for their their psychotherapy and um you know I charge a lot more than $40 a month for <laughs> for what yeah. you're given or what you are giving and you know I uh I kind of feel guilty about this sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's so much more valuable. And, and, and I've learned that lesson for me because I've actually seen other therapists do this where they they want they so worry about getting clients, they'll undercharge themselves mm-hmm. and keep it really low. And you can't really live that way. And so I've purposely said, you know, this is how much I'm worth. And if you can't afford it, I can work with you a little bit. But at the same time, I have to draw a line somewhere because I need to get paid what I'm what I'm worth. And uh, so that's been that's really worked for me, I guess. Yeah, no, it's interesting you brought that up because I was looking at it like a volume. Like if I can get, if I can have a a, a healthy price point, because essentially what it was is like ten dollars a week. I'll spend an hour with you, so it's like I was making ten bucks an hour, you know, for mm-hmm. the kind of a thing. Um, but I thought like if I could have more people in, um, I didn't really do the math that well because it's like you know I was thinking like well if I had you know fifty people or something that's that's not too bad. But then they realized once I got going. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of work. And I was like, oh, man, 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 man. Because I was just trying to like something modest. Like, can I get $1,000 a month re- uh, reoccurring revenue or $2,000 a month reoccurring revenue? And because the the level of commitment I wanted to give to everybody and, and the the attention that I wanted to give, um, it just wasn't working out uh, in terms of the numbers. So I pared everything down. And like you and I have stayed consistent because, one, you were really taking the things I was telling you and actually ap- applying them. Like it was really great to see like the stuff that we discussed, like you would implement it like the next yeah. week. So it's like I said, we've, we've watched you grow from starting a, a podcast. You didn't, I remember I that when I started talking to you, oh my God. I, had, I, had a, yeah. I had a half of a short film. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember like, you're like, how do I start a podca- podcast? And we took it step by step and got you to now to have a top ranked podcast on iTunes. And that's launched this whole thing into uh, this, the private practice. So it's interesting. So that is sort of the this concept that everybody want to know about the online marketers, online business people, online entrepreneurs, what they call the sales funnel of how all these online companies work. So now when you go through any of this stuff, you kind of you can maybe kind of in the back of your mind like how where you fit into the funnel. <laughs> so again, it's all in the book. I mean, I actually have like a diagram. I drew like a, a picture exactly how the funnel works. Um, but that's how to unpack and unveil sort of Film Trooper and where even shortcomings I have on Film Trooper. Like I never launched the course. I thought I was. I announced it like last year. Like I'm building a course and what would you like to learn? And people like gave me all this like stuff they wanted to, to know about and I just never delivered um, because, well, sometimes you just never deliver. You know, <laughs> no, it's just, I'm the same way because I, I started off thinking I'm going to be mostly focusing on my own projects and using the podcast to really promote my projects so that I can make a little money and be able to fund my personal projects. And it really shifted more into um, just loving talking to people who about their projects and, and people would contact me about like uh, they found our stuff inspiring to them and they're doing their own things. And, and I, I really just didn't need to, to do my own stuff. I mean, I'm still doing it, but it was, it's no longer the driving force Mm -hmm. and I haven't really felt the need to deliver on those things, even though they're still going, it's just, it's no longer the focus. So I guess that's kind of how I related to, to what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, it, you know, I, I, I've seen it grow, so it's really neat to see and see your bliss too. Like there's uh, there's energy to it all. And it's, it's, it's been nice because like, you know, we, it's almost like it seems like yesterday, but we've been we've been at it for a while, you know. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about this. Like it's been like almost like two years or something. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's amazing how time goes, and and I and I. But I mean, I've, I've I don't know. I've I feel like I've accomplished a lot. And you I'm, have. You know, and I'm so thankful to you for 
you know, every step of the way is, and like, like I'm launching, I'm really excited to launch my new, um, like to my education mm-hmm. piece. Like that's what I'm doing with backyard space operators. I'm folding it into my practice and I'm going to be offering one-on-one tutorials to people, um, to learn all the stop motion and practical special effects that I'm, uh, you know, fairly good at and people have really responded to, but I'm also going to be targeting and, and working with kids with special needs and, and anybody with, you know, they don't have the executive functioning skills necessarily to do stuff on their own. They need that personal touch. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and that was your idea. You gave me, you were like, what if you thought about running more of a training thing? And I'm like, that's genius. That's how I can <laughs> bridge my two worlds together. And it's coming along and I'm creating my writing this week. I'm building the space with all the cool, uh, construction area and things. So. <laughs> How cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see it all like, you know, just continue to transpire and develop. And it's an inspiration to me. Like, you know, it's one of those things too. It's interesting. You've all heard this before. Like we're a- all of us are capable of giving advice to other people or giving suggestions. Uh, but we, we are terrible at taking our own advice. <laughs> yeah. No, me too. It's exactly it. <laughs> so like I could hear like all my friends, like, why don't you do this, this and this? And like, ah, uh, so it's, it's the, the, Knowledge is one thing where like the Bruce, like famous Bruce Lee quote that I've used before, which is like, you know, knowledge is not enough. You must apply. You must apply the knowledge. That's um, it, exactly. And so uh, the application of the knowledge has been a very difficult ride. And, and I think that it will always be that way. And so even though I try, like I get excited, like, let's do this. Um, um, it's and then I go down that path, you know, as you're actually applying it, you're realizing man, this is not quite working. Or it's like, uh, you know, do I power through it just to power through it? Or I, I'm comfortable a lot for myself just to be like, I, I get things going, get things going. And once I realize it's not finding that that um, that place where you're just in a groove, you know, or there's there's enough, not enough fire behind it that says I'm going to push through it and use grit to, you know, to power through the perseverance. Um, because I think that's what happens. I was building my course and then I, you know, I'm really good friends with Alex Ferrari of Indie Film Hustle and I've never seen anybody have his, his proliferation, his proliferation of just product and content he puts out. I've never met anyone like him. Just amazing. Just constant stuff. I don't know how he does it. Mm-hmm. And, in, uh, he's just finished a, another feature film he's be releasing. And it's one of those things like, um, but the way he puts his courses together, there's like this, um, he was able just to put it together. And I wanted to make sure that my course wasn't like another course of like Udemy courses. You know, it wasn't like another course, like it had to be something unique. And I just never, when I saw more and more stuff pop up, I'm like, I'm not, am I adding any of the value that's already exists out there? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and you have to say, is it worth, there's a point where you have to say, is the return worth the, the investment of time and energy? And, and, and if, and for me, if it's no longer fun and it's not worth the investment, I don't, I, I, I'm the same with you. I say like, I'm okay. Like pulling back on things. Right. Cause I was, I was like, man, I don't even know. Like as I was doing it, I go, is this obsolete? Like I'm looking at this stuff, like you can get all this stuff on free right now, like on YouTube. Like, I mean, like I, like what I was in this crossroads of like, if I'm going to do it, I, it really has to be super, super valuable to anybody out there, you know? And I just, and I felt like, you know, when masterclass kind of popped up, like what who wants to listen to, you know, it's like, well, who wants to listen to me when you can listen to, you know, you know, Robert De Niro or whatever. I'm sorry. Um, Martin Scorsese. They haven't yeah, done yeah. It yet. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> for 90 bucks, like, you know, how, what's my $90 going to do with that night versus that $90, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so there was a defeatist attitude to it. Yes. I admit <laughs> they, they talk of the defeatist attitude as well as uh, limited belief, uh, limited beliefs. Like, you know, I've, I limited my own internal beliefs that I could do something. Um, so I'm aware of all that. It's just one of those things like, crap, well, what can I do? Because one thing we have discovered is just um, time management. Like, again, we're going to get into that in a little bit. I realize we're talking like we're in like a 45-minute mark. Yeah, we're I, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just kind of make a note here. This might have to be part one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> part two is like then gets into the – so we're going to leave part one with the simple reason like – why did why was I on a hiatus from Film Trooper for the last you know whatever four months has been? Um, and those who've been following again know that I um, have jumped into real estate to become a real estate broker. And the honest truth is, the last few months I was just trying to learn a new job. 
<laughs> like a new profession. Like I've been around it, but it's one of those things like I needed to know what my role was as a real estate agent, a real estate broker, and then um, how I'm going to apply all this stuff. And that's why I'm excited to share like how all this stuff is, sort of gets connected. Um, and for me, I have, I'm a really – it's impossible for me to do like multitasking. I, I just can't do it. Like I, I get in this thing like either whatever the project is, I just go all in and, and, I, and I focus on just on that and, and other stuff just falls the wayside. Like I'm not very good – at like managing like well the first part of the morning I'm just going to work on this and the second part of the morning I'll back on this like if mm -hmm. it's on my brain like then it's on my brain like then it sort of all encompasses me so it's like it, then it's like all 24 hours like I'm thinking I about totally it, get it <laughs> you know and I I have to go well shoot because I've tried those things where you know you have like a schedule and you you plan it out kind of stuff I'm like man, I just, I can't stick to it. I just, it doesn't work for me. I, I don't know what it is. So I, I get, I, you know, I have to try harder, I guess, but, um, my I've, internal I've, uh, workings. Yeah. My, I've uh, recruited my wife to be kind of my, my, my taskmaster uh, mm. to, to do that. Cause she's very good at those kinds of things. And like when I was writing my book, she's like, no, go back to writing the book. No, you got to fit. No, go finish the book. <laughs> I was like, okay. And uh, that's really helped me. And I know uh, my buddy who I met through the podcast, uh, Rob Rahman, he uh, he's talking. You know, we we talk about him uh, using time management tactics. And I know he's developed a charting system for himself, and it's really helped. But he also has people like his wife to to push him forward. So um, I, I think having that outside force it, it can be great. And you've been a great accountability for me because I have to check it with you and be like, well, how have you moved forward? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, and we, we try to focus on things like what is it that you're struggling with right now? And like, and, and I, and I tried to, and the empathetic view I have, cause I know where you're going, you're run, running a private practice I, and real estate being a real estate broker is now it's like this private practice. And like, how does it, how does, how does, how do we fit the creative world into these other professions that, you know, we have chosen, you know, moving forward. And, um, it's been really interesting cause it's like trying to also give ourselves, um, a break not to, because there's certain coaches that might come in like, I only know one way to success and this is it. Either you do it or not. You know, get out of the way. You know, it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so there, that's been the hiatus, the reason that I was on a hiatus. But it really comes down to, so the big question, maybe I can leave it with this, like this part one here, is that in the book, in the book, How to Make and Sell Your Film Online and, and Survive the Hollywood Implosion While Doing It, the, and those who've been following the, the Film Tube podcast for a long time, know that I've said this before in the discovery that I've come up with, which is that films, um, actually any sort of, to some extent, art form uh, that is sold commercially, uh, whether or not it be books, uh, music, uh, films, or art, in the end, becomes sort of like an advertisement for something, you know, of higher, you know, value. It sounds like, and that's like sacrilege to a lot of artists out there. So what I came up with was I realized it's not really advertisement. You can look at, if you're crass like that, you can say, yes, films are an advertisement for something else. And then it's like, um, but the reality, the artists, for all the artists out there, what we've discovered is that the films are really an amplifier for something bigger, sort of like a bigger message or a bigger world. And it's the price point that you put on that world or that bigger message is really what you're selling. And um, again, we, we can go back, we can, we talked about this before, but it's like, um, Star Wars was like that, right? So Star Wars, this was obviously George Lucas was the one who said that all the money is in the action figures. And he built his entire empire of, of, of his business off the sale of all the merchandise versus the Star Wars films and, you know, just narrowing it down to the action figures. And because he retained the rights, the ancillary merchandise rights for Star Wars, or he sold the rights um, for a limited time for whatever, 20 years to 20th Century Fox until he acquired those rights back. And then he had all the rights to his, his entire franchise, movies and all the merchandise. And he sold it to Disney for whatever, $5 billion. Yeah. So that's, and the, the other thing, the thing about it is this as well. In the music industry, you know, it's like everything's on Spotify or streaming. So I don't know how many, you know, artists are, you know, people are actually downloading and paying for CDs, records and songs. Like, and if you look, each song is worth 99 cents. Nowadays, movies are 99 cents. It's like, that's how, that's how, how much you know these movies are worth like 99 cents <laughs> yeah and so but the thing is 
the big example of that is um, a Beats by Dre. So you have Dr. Dre, who's renowned, you know, hip hop star, you know, so he's made a lot of money in the record industry, but the real money came from his sale to Apple for how many billions of dollars for Beats by Dre, because he became the face and the advertisement for these, um, like, you know, subpar uh, speaker uh, headphones. <laughs> I say subpar because, oh my God. It's you are paying hundreds of bucks for these uh, logo because I know my daughter really wanted them. We got them like these things are terrible, you know. <laughs> yeah, I fell apart all the time, and it was like anyway, but it didn't matter. So if you think about that, uh, another person, uh, the famous boxer George Foreman, you know, he was a heavyweight fighter, a champion. He made all his money selling the Foreman grill, you know. So you, there's a lot of people that have like they have some sort of success in their life. And they made some, you know, money, you know, either in, as filmmakers or musicians or authors or whatever like that. But then you realize if you uncover a lot of these stories, there's always they always make like majority of their money from something else that happened. The Foreman Grill, the Beats by Dre, you know, yeah. uh, action figures for a movie. I mean, th- th- those are like extreme examples, but they're they're needed to understand where you fit into this world as an independent. And so. The whole thing about Film Trooper was discovering this, uncovering this uh, fact that's like, okay, because my movie was, I'm I'm renting it for 99 cents. I'm selling it for like the bundle for whatever, three bucks or whatever it is. Um, but I have to, I would have to sell so many units, you know, to make, you know, make a substantial living off it or have one source of income. Yeah. And but, you can't keep making those movies. I mean, it takes you, I mean, I, I know it took yeah. you many, many months. I mean, it's like for me, it takes so much time to make one movie. You can't, you can't put them out fast enough, even if you could sell them at a, even a decent rate. Yeah, definitely. And so it's interesting because I just talked about, I just said, you know, books, music, and films are sort of advertisement for something else. Well, my, my film was an advertisement for the book. <laughs> so my book, but my book now, what is that advertising? Like I had I never this. never thought of that. That's, that, that's it's funny. So the, the movie was the advertisement for the book, you know, and then, but the book was supposed to be like an advertisement for this membership. But I realized I didn't, the kind of membership that I wanted to run, I didn't have the bandwidth to do it at the, the, yeah. the numbers. So I was like, well, what else could I do? And not this. That, that that I felt that I could commit to that I was really truly you know vested into that I could I, I that I I don't know that I that I could offer my best um, so this is important to know so there's a difference between understanding that films are an amplifier for something bigger or an advertisement for something more expensive um, versus this concept the, the the way the film business works sort of right now. And actually, the way the music industry works to some extent, and uh, the, the the book publishing and the book writing world, and anything where there's um, a commerce or a business entity working with artists, um, and actually, it works the same way with extreme sports athletes, uh, your skate, your professional skateboarders, snowboarders, BMX bikers, whatever it is, motocross guys. Um, there's a difference between in the movie world, it's everybody makes their money based on the on the budget of the project and the budget of the project determines the the fees that everybody's going to get paid and so that's where you make your money <laughs> so the bigger the budget the better chance that your fees are going to be higher um, so it's very difficult on a small independent um, level to generate a large budget to pay you know substantial fees anyone who's working in the industry knows that right now listening says y- you're right I as a assistant producer or assistant director or a, a, a grip or a gaffer or a DP, you know, or an actor. You know, I work up here. I'm very fortunate to work part-time as an actor up here. I say part-time because the only people I know in this town that can make a full-time acting is one is if your full-time is very minimal in your terms of your expenses <laughs> <laughs> or you uh, supplement it with a lot of modeling. And I'm not a model. And so like because models make like three times as much as actors do. Um and so the interesting thing about that is that I know, like when the budget comes out and says for this job, they're paying this much. And you're like, okay, here's a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is. And I don't know how many people out there have been paid a few hundred bucks for like a independent movie, you know, because that's what the, uh, the, uh, the fee is or the breakdown of the budget uh, in terms of uh, working with a union or something like that. But you're in a bigger gig that's paid for like um, one of the, a big tech company, you know, you might be on a, a commercial and you working as a gripper gaffer or a DP or an actor or a producer, 
you're like, great, I'm making scale. I'm making the union scale, which is much higher. I'm making X amount of, you know, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars this week. And the project wraps up in four weeks and boom, I got a good chunk of change. Now then I'm off on my next project based off whatever the budget is for that. And so that's how, you know, um, people in the industry make their money. It's the fees. Now, the other thing, if you're a producer, I think I've given this example is, is probably the best way to explain it. Um, I said this a hundred times before, but what we learn is that this is how a producer makes money and a distribution company makes money off the films. Uh, this actually applies the same way as in the book publishing world and the music publishing world. All three of them work almost the same way. So all these distribution companies is they don't they don't necessarily have to write the books or make the movies or make the music. They're just the distribution channel to all this stuff. And if they can get a ton of titles in their library, maybe one or two might actually be a hit where they make a lot of their money. But each one of them, uh, because they didn't spend a lot of money to acquire anything, they just basically had somebody, the artist, sign up a contract that says, well, we'll do our best as to, you know, to sell it. <laughs> yeah. And if we sell it, um, you know, you'll get a, a little bit of here and there. Hey there, this is Scott again. I'm just going to leave it right here for part one because uh, Kyle and I get into more nitty gritty details of what we learn in both of our uh, experiences of running the podcast, both of our podcasts, as well as our private practices, um, private services, and then um, see how that all gets combined in the world of filmmaking and in everybody else's journey as an uh, independent filmmaking entrepreneur. Uh, so check it out, part two. Thanks for stopping by and hanging in there and listen to this one with me. Film Trooper, empowering filmmaking entrepreneurs.